The next debate team would be held by Dr. Sujini Shroff, who would be debating on a very interesting topic, very relevant to us in our day-to-day -day practice. Mitomycin by sponges prior to trabeclectomy. I vouch for a traditional approach. Dr. Sujini Shroff is a practicing glaucoma consultant from Narayan Netralia, Bangalore, and uh, has authored several Indian and in, uh, international publications. On to you, Dr. Sujini. Unmute yourself. Am I audible, ma'am? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. At the onset, I'd like to thank uh, ARC, AIOS, and Dr. Chitra for giving me this opportunity to present this panel. Uh, today, my topic is mitomycin C by sponge, the traditional approach. So the outcomes of trabeclectomy have improved vastly since the usage of MMC 30 years back. Various methods for the delivery of MMC have been studied. The latest being the subtenons injection of MMC, which has definitely shown promising results. However, I would like to highlight a few points on why sponge is still preferred by many. In trabeclectomy, we aim to produce diffuse blebs and not cystic localized thin wall blebs. Previously, the anterior placement of mitomycin C sponge and limbus base flap were responsible for the complications post trabeclectomy. With the adoption of Moorfield safe surgical technique, the occurrence of these blebs can be avoided by a wide subconjunctival dissection, phonix base flap, with multiple mitomycin C sponge kept as posteriorly as possible without touching the conjunctival edge. The primary concern with sponge has been fragmentation of sponge and leaving behind remnant of MMC soaked sponge, which can lead to granulomatous reaction, necrosis, and leakage. This was however common in older sponge material like methyl cellulose. With newer materials like polyvinyl alcohol and gelatin, the chance of fragmentation is not there. To avoid retaining the mitomycin C sponge, sponge count and thorough irrigation should be done on removal. Even with injection MMC, there is still a possibility of incomplete removal as the drug can be retained in the hydrated tenons. Other methods to avoid leaving behind the sponge are usage of suture on the sponge. This can be either multiple sponge on a single suture or single sponge on a single suture. Experimental studies have been done on staining of the mitomycin C with tripan blue to identify the extent of the antifibrotic treatment and sponge visualization. The MMC sponge can be placed subtenons under direct visualization, taking care to avoid the cut conjunctival edge. In trabeclectomy, we like to avoid a subconjunctival bleed at all costs because this can lead to fibroblast pro proliferation and failure. This, there is a risk of this subconjunctival hemorrhage with an injection. There's also a small risk of intrascleral injection of mitomycin C. MMC sponge has stood the test of time with various improvisations to give good outcomes for trabeclectomy. Though injection mitomycin C has shown comparable results, there are still no long-term prospective randomized control studies yet to show its superiority to sponge. For, sur for, surgeons who prefer, for surgeons who prefer doing primary trabeclectomies in secondary glaucomas like uveitic, traumatic, anterior segment dysgenesis, neovascular glaucomas, or even in childhood glaucomas, there's still insufficient literature for the dosage of mitomycin C by injection and their outcomes. In conclusion, a recent survey to show the intraoperative use of MMC in UK showed that majority of the surgeons, nearly 75% of them, still use mitomycin C soak sponge over other delivery forms. Hence, until further evidence, each surgeon can choose what works best in their hands to give optimal blebs and IOP control for their patients. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very crisp debate of yours, uh, Dr. Sujini.